Good morning. I'm Nancy Kuhn, your liturgist for the day. In the announcements, uh, this Friday, January 8th, is the due day for the Quarters for Kids project sponsored by Brian Jones. If families could please ensure that their child's quarter stocking is re received in the church office by Friday, that would be great. All others may participate by donating online at our website. Click the Give button and then choose Board of Child Care Quarters for Kids. Or you may mail a check to Faith United Methodist Church. Please note Quarters for Kids in the notes section. Thank you for your support. Beloved, welcome to worship with the community of Faith United Methodist Church. I'm the Reverend Dr. Laura Norvell, and I give thanks for the ways that we are able to gather in this season. Today, we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, a star beckoning leaders out from their places to come and witness a king, a new king, an emerging king, a star in the sky. When we gather for worship, we're doing hard work. We're lifting our voices in praise, we're offering up the deepest concerns of our heart. We break bread together. We listen for the word of God. Come, let us worship together in the light of the star. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding. Guide us in thy perfect light. Come, let us worship together. Please join me in the call to worship. 
The new dawn will arise upon you. You shall see and be radiant. The new dawn will arise upon you. The Holy One will bless the people with peace. The new dawn will arise upon you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The new dawn will arise upon you. God is here among us. Let us rejoice and be, God, be glad in God's presence. Please join me in the opening prayer. Radiant morning star, you are both guidance and mystery. Visit our rest with disturbing dreams and our journeys with strange companions. Grace us with the hospitality to open our hearts and homes to visitors filled with unfamiliar wisdom, bearing profound and unusual gifts. Amen. I want to welcome this morning children of all ages as we gather for our children's message. Today, we're talking about the wise strangers that came to visit Jesus. This is one of those stories that we remember as much from a carol that we sing as we do from the Bible that we read. What we know about these strangers was that they came from Persia and they were people who paid very close attention to the way stars moved in the sky. I wonder if at your house you have a nativity that you put out this year. And I wonder if your kings have been there or your wise strangers have been there since the very beginning. Sometimes it's a lot of fun to make sure that the kings have to travel around your house. So my kids used to like move the kings from the kitchen to the living room, and then maybe downstairs to the family room, and then upstairs to somebody's bedroom for a while. And the kings don't show up until later during Christmas season, during those 12 days, or 
even maybe not until January 6th. Today, I've got a lot of wise people up here. I've got three sets of wise people up here who have all finally made it to bring gifts to Jesus. I wonder if you could pick a gift to bring to the baby Jesus, what gift would you bring? Let's be prayerful about that in the week to come. Will you pray with me? God, we're thankful for the light of Jesus in the world. We're thankful for the light in the sky that maybe some of us saw last week too. The kinds of lights that cause people to travel far places and find new things. God, help us to know how we can share gifts. How we can share gifts with Jesus and for Jesus. Amen. I hope you all have a really fantastic week. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first lesson is Psalm 117. Universal call to worship. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. The second reading is from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They were asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. The prophet wrote, and you Bethlehem in the land of Judea are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the, the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There are scenes from parenting that are seared on some of our memories. Perhaps you've been part of this scene at some point. It is deep in the holiday season. The house has been full of generations of families for what seems like days or even weeks. 
or you're on your third stop through the various family tree Christmas celebrations at other people's houses, you've been hopping from house to house, this is the second gathering on this particular day, your child's nap was about as long as the drive over here, approximately an hour shorter than the nap needed to be, but definitely all the time that the family needed in the car on this particular day. The sugar intake has been really high for days, for you, for the kids, and there are low tables in every home you visit that are covered with cookies and candy and breakable heirlooms that kids should not be playing with. Dogs are zipping between guest legs and kids who only see one another once a year and all of these adults around them, they're anxious and they're clingy, kind of watching these new faces. They're interested, but not sure. And it gets to be gift exchange time. Each of the kids receives a brightly colored package and the wrapping is torn off before you can even really know who handed your child this particular gift. One kid squeals with delight and just as everyone smiles adoringly, another one shrieks and says, I don't want this, I hate this game. The shriek, that shriek, sounds suspiciously like one of your kids, one who definitely needed more nap or less sugar. Instinctively, you glance around the room, scanning for disappointed faces. Surely the giver of this classic game feels a bit let down right now. They probably love the game. It probably has some deep sentimental meaning in their lives, and now your kid is in a full-bore Christmas meltdown on the floor. Maybe I'm the only parent with this memory lingering on my soul somewhere. Today, we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Technically, we're celebrating a few days early. Christmas is a feast of 12 days, and it ends officially with Epiphany on January 6th. The word Epiphany means a manifestation of something supernatural or a moment of revelation. If we break it down, the word itself is comprised of roots that come together to mean shine on or show up. The Feast of the Epiphany, then, is a time when we remember the wise strangers who traveled from afar, following the emerging light of a star in the night sky in search of a new king, bearing gifts for that new king. When we say that they come from afar, we're not just talking about geographic distance. These wise strangers, likely not exclusively men, were coming from a place whose ways were very different, whose religious traditions and interpretations of the world were very different. They were coming from Persia and they were steeped in Zoroastrianism a tradition that was a precursor to Islam. Zoroastrianism is monotheistic, so at least they shared that in common with the Jewish family that they, thought, that they sought. But so much else was so very different. They brought with them gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, strange gifts for a child, and yet they were gifts known in the ancient world. The prophet Isaiah had referenced gold and frankincense being presented by the nations at the restoration of Jerusalem. Other recorded histories document these three specific gifts being presented to new kings elsewhere in the region in prior centuries. Gold was universally precious. Frankincense is a resin used for perfume or incense. Myrrh was, is also a a fragrant resin combined with other things for anointing and for medicinal use. So these wise strangers were bearing seemingly exotic and unusual gifts, gifts which they understood to have great value to a king. They were also gifts that would have been far from the humble daily life of Mary and Joseph and the child who was probably more of a toddler than a baby at this point. Scholars have imagined a symbolic role that these gifts might have played, gold for a king, frankincense for a priest, and myrrh to be used at the embalming of Je at Jesus' death. These gifts 
this journey. The intent of these wise strangers was to pay homage, to bow down and worship this new king. Somewhere in the different ways that they understood the world to work, it had been revealed to them that this child was someone of great power. And that revelation moved something in them, something that caused them to set out on a journey, a journey that included a stop at Herod's palace before landing in the tiny town of Bethlehem. I want to lift a few things out of this story that might guide us as we stand at the threshold of a new year, pondering what light is calling to us right now. First, these wise strangers were just that. They were strangers. They were from a different political system, a different religious system, a different social system. And yet they recognized the bigger good news of the birth of this child, Jesus. Somehow they recognized it, they sought him out, and they honored him before the religious leaders of the Jewish community. Let's not forget that these early visitors in the story were the shepherds. We learned about them a couple weeks ago who were working grunge jobs, and these sages from afar. They were not the priests, the scribes, the local leader, or King Herod. The outsiders, in many ways, were the first to understand the signs and to show up. I wonder, how often do strangers particularly strangers who are not the kind of folks that we typically hang with or the kind of folks that we particularly respect, how often do they offer us gifts that we don't exactly recognize or receive? I wonder how many times we have been offered a bit of wisdom, a bit of acknowledgement, an opportunity or an insight from someone whose ways or understandings or truths are foreign to us. And we've not even known what was being offered. These were strangers with strange beliefs, but they came to worship the power and the majesty that they knew somehow this child possessed. Next, the gifts that the strangers came bringing were their idea of goodness and honor. Not necessarily what a young new family needs, right? And probably not even someone who knows what it means to be a future king is apt to be future excited about, right? Like, come on, gold, frankincense, myrrh, what do I do with these things? Especially if I don't know that I'm gonna be a king, right? These gift offerings had value that was understood as honor by the people that were giving them. Think about how often we give gifts today and the anxiety that we create around gift giving. Somewhere along the line, the giving of gifts has become an anxious undertaking for the giver, trying to anticipate the deepest desires and hopes of the recipient rather than reflecting the giver's deep respect and honor for the person who is receiving the gift. I wonder, have you ever had the experience of receiving a gift from someone who was so very excited to give you something? And they were nearly giddy as you received it, but somewhere in the back of your mind, you weren't quite sure what it was you were supposed to do with this gift or why the giver thought it was such a perfect gift for you? Hmm. Finally, I think it's true that not every gift makes sense to us until we've lived with it for a bit. And maybe the reason someone gives us a gift and the reason that we value the gift are two really different reasons. Remember how I mentioned biblical scholars interpreting the gifts that Jesus received? Gold for kingship, frankincense for the priestly role or the religious reformer, and myrrh for the embalming of a body broken by crucifixion. Gifts that were already the tradition of the day came to have meaning in the context of Jesus's life and death, particularly as we look back over the wide sweep of the storyline. 
Those gifts couldn't have been seen for that value in the moment that they were given by any of the characters in the story, really. Gifts are complicated things. They involve a giver and a recipient. They involve an intention and they involve acceptance. They reflect values, hopes, dreams, acknowledgments. They reveal something about the giver. They reveal something about the recipient. This week, you should have received a gift in the mail for the year to come. A star word should have appeared in your mailbox. Star words show up in our lives at Epiphany, sparks of guidance or wisdom, energy or call. Star words are not chosen by each of us for ourselves. And in this case, I want to assure you that while you are not coming to the front and picking a word randomly out of a basket, these words were not consciously chosen by human hands for you. Really, I promise we created a random and blind process of putting stars in envelopes for people. I've already heard from some of you. I've already heard some of the resonance or appreciation you feel for the word that chose you this year. In the immortal words of 38 Special, hold on loosely, but don't let go. That is a special nod to all of the children of the 80s out there, and especially you, Michael Wu. Don't be quick to assume the role this particular word plays in your life. But do pay attention. Do notice. Do ponder in your heart. If you're a visitor with us today, if you didn't receive a star word and you would like to, please use the worship sign-in form linked on our website and let us know that you'd like a word. Share your contact info and we'll be sure to get one to you really fast. It is my prayer that this star word hasn't caused shrieking disappointment in your life. It is my prayer and my hope that this star word might accompany you in the year to come as a gift. A gift whose meaning is not yet clear. A gift that might mean one thing now, an entirely different thing later. A gift you didn't choose. A gift that somehow chose you. A gift that might shape the offering that you make to Christ in the year to come. May it be so. Amen. Even though we don't have the opportunity to gather physically in the same space this season, we gather our hearts and minds and share bread and wine. We share in the feast together by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is not Faith United Methodist Church's table. This is God's table, and we believe that all are welcome here. Hear these words of invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. 
Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. I want to invite you as forgiven and reconciled people to take just a moment today to reach out to someone in your world and to offer them the peace of Christ, the peace of reconciliation, the peace that comes when we know that we have been forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with each of you this day. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself in, as our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born, and in your signs and witnesses, in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered in these ways in this time and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We share from this one loaf because we who are many are one in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the redemption offered in Christ's blood. I invite you, by yourself or with whomever you're gathered, now to receive these gifts. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Let us gather our hearts and give thanks for what we have just received. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In a season in which we have received gifts both tangible and intangible, we are called in our worship to offer a portion of those gifts back into the world for God's work. You have been so generous to share gifts throughout this year as a community, and we give thanks in these moments as we place our gifts on the altar. I want to remind you of the order that is important in our liturgy. We are asked in scripture to not come to the altar with our offerings until we have reconciled with our neighbor. We did that work in our confession and when we share peace with one another. Let us continue that work of reconciling as we continue to strive to bring things to the altar as offerings. And we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you.
I confess that it is a strange season. It is a season where there is typically joy and merriment. And yet around us, we know the world is wrestling, struggling with a virus, struggling with a pandemic. I invite you to bring hearts, hearts that have joy and hearts that have lament together in this space as we share our prayers together. And throughout this week, when you think of someone close to you, when you think of someone you know has a need or a celebration, I hope that you will continue to lift that person to God in those moments as the Holy Spirit has nudged you to pray without ceasing. Let us pray. God, we stand in awe of the wisdom of wise strangers who sought a star in the sky, who sought the power of a king they did not know, who understood signs and wonders. We pray for that kind of wisdom, that kind of vision, that kind of call in our lives. God, we pray for the people that we love who are experiencing sickness, who are experiencing healing, who are experiencing grief and loss in this season. We know the weight is heavy right here in our faith community, but also in the communities that extend from us. It is so very heavy. And God, we give thanks for the skilled hands and the loving hearts that offer care to people that we love and know. We give thanks for scientists and caregivers and doctors and the people who keep hospitals clean and open and air, and air conditioned and heated and all of the water running and the lights on. We pray for the burden that they bear in this season, that it might be lightened, that wisdom might surround us in ways that help us lighten that burden. God, we pray for leaders throughout the world who are grappling with ways of continuing to put one foot in front of the other, keeping people safe and well and whole. And we pray for the ways that we might collectively respond to the call that is coming from creation. We pray, God, again, for that sense of wisdom, for that outpouring of wisdom and light, for gifts that show up in our lives that maybe we don't fully understand but that somehow come to call us forward and shape us for the ways that you intend to move and walk and work on the earth. Bless our hands for the work you call us to do. Bless our hearts for the work that you call us to do. Bless our minds for the work that you call us to do. And bless our community for the work that you call us to do. We pray all of these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit. Amen. Arise, shine. 
there is light beckoning you out into the world. You have already received the gifts that you need to serve and become and grow and expand and transform. Go out from this place knowing that you have been created full of love by a God who adores you. Go out from this place following in the footsteps of Jesus who came as a baby in flesh to show us how it can be done. Go out from this place enlivened by the very breath of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, love God, love one another. Amen. Thank you.